What's going on guys? Thanks for checking out another video. So today we're actually going to use Google Earth to show y'all how I like to use satellite imaging to pick out productive wintertime redfish spots. I'm going to go over a few key factors that I really look for before I'm ever even on the water. Let's check it out. Alright, so I've picked an area here that I've actually never fished uh, just to kind of take away from any bias that I might already have about an area. I want to just kind of go in blind and show y'all uh, really the three main things that I'm looking for and, and also explain why these could be productive areas that hold that would hold redfish during the winter. Um, first off, you've got this western creek. So these western creeks that run up against the mainland along the intercoastal waterway, uh, pretty much from Virginia all through Georgia, are typically going to be warmer creeks in the colder months. There's a darker mud bottom a lot more oyster and it's just an area that the water temperature is going to stay just a tad bit warmer a tad bit warmer uh, which will hold the bait fish in return holding the redfish and the predator fish so another thing that's important to keep in mind are the weather patterns and like i've already mentioned a little bit in this video uh, following those weather trends can really help with your bite just because the fish are there when it's really really cold in the winter sometimes it's, it gets pretty tough to get them to eat so if you go on those warming trends you get a couple warm days those fish are typically going to feed really well the cool thing about this creek and what really drew my eye to it is, you know, you've got this main stem coming in off the intercoastal waterway, which runs here, uh, and it breaks off into three, really four different creeks. Obviously, this one feeds back into the waterway, which I, I love that, um, but also these just kind of dead end back into the marsh, uh, actually under some great looking flood tide tailing flats, um, which, you know, in the, in the warmer months, we'll get into making a video on, on how to look at these flats on Google Earth before you ever even leave the dock and kind of know productive areas to go to. But today we're going to talk about these three main stems here uh, and look into them and show you, you know, the areas that the fish should probably be holding in the colder months. Now, all these, you know, things that I'm sharing are, are things that have worked for me and, and from Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, all the way up the coast, these trends play true. Uh, but just because it is a perfect spot doesn't always mean there's going to be redfish in there. These fish can move. Uh, water temperature, bait, it'll drive them around. And so uh, these are just these key factors that y'all want to probably tune into uh, when going out to target schools of redfish in the wintertime. So now redfish is a hardy fish and they will definitely feed in very cold temperatures, but you'll get those fish kind of more fired up. They'll be floating a little higher in the water column and more likely to play, you know, on those warmer days. Now, when you get a, a real cold spike, it can definitely hurt the bite. And it's, it's also important to remember that just the, the first day of that cold drop, a lot of times isn't when those fish are really affected. It's that second day as that cold kind of really sets in and actually drops the water temperature. So air temperature is key, water temperature is more important. So keeping track of where that water temperature is at, if you get a two or three degree rise, you can really, really see a, a, a heavy change in the fish's activity uh, in a much more aggressive way. So we'll talk about this middle creek first. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. You know, right off the bat, my eye is drawn to this zone here we've got some deep bends and you got to think as the tide's dropping one i really like to target these fish on the low tide in the winter that's a very important fact uh, what it does is it draws all these fish to a smaller zone so the more water obviously the more places fish can be and as that tide drops i'm i'm looking for these key areas where these fish are going to lay up and school up and hold during a low tide so for me this spot here uh, as it falls out of all these grass flats into this deep channel, you finally get into this area that's got some good bottom structure. You've got these little sandbars, you've got some islands, and if you look really closely, this is key. You can see these darker edges, a dark edge here. You can see a dark edge here. You can see this darker patch here, uh, and especially this nice dark patch up here. And what those are is oysters. Now, granted, it could sometimes just be the satellite image. The picture is a little off, but typically when you've got clear water like this and you can tell that uh, you've got a darker patch that's almost always oysters. So I'm looking for, you know, typically not all the way in the back of the creek. They're gonna be about midway in the creek as that tide drops out. Um, these fish, they wanna stay as far back in these creeks as they can, as long as they've still got the depth that they're comfortable in at a low tide. They need enough water to kind of, you know, feel safe, but they also don't wanna to be too close to the main channels in the winter, uh, like out here where the dolphins can easily get in and, and, and target them. Dolphins do feed on redfish and they, and they feed on redfish a lot in the winter when they're these large schools. Uh, the thing about a school of redfish in the winter is usually say we find a redfish school in this spot, they typically don't go far. They're, they're very much so creatures of habit. So once these fish kind of claim this area as their home in the winter, 
they're probably going to stay there. And a, and a school of redfish in the winter, sometimes I'll have a dozen to 15 fish. Sometimes it'll be five, 600 fish. So uh, you'd be very surprised how many fish will stay in a very small area too. Uh, but but this, this area, again, I'm going to get back into why this is productive. Like I said, you've got these oyster bars and these sandbars and these little islands. And the other big factor I look for are smaller creek drains. So you've got this creek draining in, you've got this coming in, you've got a creek draining in here. And not to mention all the other smaller creeks that are up the way here. Um, so these fish should be, there should be fish hanging in this area here. Um, the other thing to think about is the outside of these bends is always going to be the, where the most current is. And the nice thing about this zone in here is you've got all these current breaks. So redfish will definitely use current to feed. Uh, but in the wintertime, when the, when the water is colder and they, they want to burn less calories and have to work, you know, not nearly as hard to stay in an area, they're definitely going to take advantage of these areas where they can get out of the current, but still be in that zone where they can feed. So these deeper pockets behind these bars here, right in here, as well as, as the tides dropping right here. Um, these are all just key areas. So if I was going to go in here and check this creek at a dead low tide, I'd want to look in this zone here uh, around this first creek drain. And then I look really hard through these bends, looking in the areas where there's no current. The cool thing about the cooler times of year, if you know through based off satellite imaging where you're going and, and you've already located an area that looks like it should hold fish, you can move through that area very quickly because the water is much clearer. You're going to know if the fish are there or not very quickly. So um, we've looked at this spot. We're going to slide up and look at this next creek. The cool thing about this next creek is it's very different. You know, this one lasts a lot longer. It stays wide and deep for a long time. Um, so uh, this one kind of gets shallower quicker and you've got these very obvious pockets, these very obvious holding areas. This one, there's a lot more areas that could be productive uh, out here towards the front. So we'll kind of start here. And like I showed y'all earlier, this is the main branch coming in off the intercoastal waterway. And you get up in here. And what I would do is I just start checking all these areas where there's bars and oyster bars uh, as you get into these bins going up the creek. So this first one here would be a productive spot to look. And then here, and then even this next bend up here where you've got another nice oyster bar, a nice little current break. Um, if I was gonna you know, have to bet on a spot that these redfish would hold in here, it would either be in this little oxbow bend here, uh, probably behind the sandbar here, just because they've got that current break, you can tell there's very deep water here. You know, just knowing that these bends, as that current pushes around the edge, it's going to really dig out that edge. So when that tide gets slow, this will probably be an area they fall into to hang out along with a lot of bait. Uh, the next area that looks real productive in here is once you get up here, you're almost to the back of the creek, but see how we've got kind of that same effect as earlier to where we've got some bars, some islands, a lot of creeks straining out, and you've got the deep pockets here and deep pockets here. And that's, that's what I'm looking for uh, as an area to hold fish. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll sit here pull up Google Earth on my phone, scroll through an area and scroll through it on my GPS as well at the same time and just drop spots with question marks. You can actually change the icons on my low rants and I'll just drop a question mark in those areas. So I know when I get in that creek, I don't have to sit there and play around to know if I'm in that bend. It can look very different when you're on the water uh, than when you're actually looking at a satellite image. So having those icons already dropped into my GPS helps me be like, all right, this was the area I was talking about. I've already cross-referenced it with my, with my satellite imaging on my phone. And uh, you know I'm, I'm ready to go. So, hey guys, one thing that is so important is to just not get too sucked into an area. Just because you've looked at it on the satellite imaging, if you get in there and you work through it and you feel like the fish aren't there, you know, go and run that same pattern in the next creek down or the next creek up. Uh, just there, there's lots of productive areas this time of year. There are areas that look productive, but as these fish school up, you know, the percentage of marsh that actually has fish in it becomes smaller. So there's more fish in smaller areas. So just constantly moving, checking lots and lots of spots is very, very key. The other spot that I really want to look at is this very southern creek off of this system here. Um, you've got a very similar kind of nice windy creek, but this one feeds off into three other smaller, smaller tributaries that feed into this main creek, which then again feeds into an even larger creek here uh, that goes back out into the waterway. Um, so you can run that same system up these creeks, the smaller ones feeding off of it, looking for creek mouths that drain, looking for oyster bars and little islands within the middle of the marsh and looking for those deep pockets. Um, you know, these creek drains uh, that go up along this, lots and lots of water is going to be flowing out, lots of bait is going to be flowing out. Um, but just looking at this, you know, from a real bird's eye perspective, way, way, way pulled out, the most productive looking area that I want to go check out first off is this little zone here. Um, you've got this creek and this creek both draining into it. 
and you can tell you got an oyster bar here, you got a uh, an, or you've got an oyster bar here, you've got a nice sandbar here, you got another bar here. So there's lots of areas that are going to be holding that bait at low tide, and you can tell that this whole little deep bend is 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 a good place for them to hang out, uh, based off of these bars, these creeks draining out, and this deeper pocket. So. Um, th those are really the, the main three factors in the wintertime that I'm looking at on satellite imaging. Now, when you get into summer, a lot of these trends change, and, and I'll do some videos about that as well. But in the winter, just remember, you're looking for confluences, creek drains, and oyster bars. Uh, and you want to be about as far back as you can be in these creeks where there's still enough water for them to fall off into a deeper pocket. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, as the temperature changes, warmer, colder, these fish want to be able to slide up onto flats. And they want to be able to pull off the flats into the deeper pockets. So they're going to follow the bait around and they're going to follow the water temperature around. Well, guys, I hope that video was helpful for y'all. It was definitely a little confusing for me at first when I started looking at satellite imaging to really know what I was looking at. Looking at it from above at first, you kind of like, you know, everything looks good. So really being able to look for those, those key factors and break a small, a, a large creek down into a small portion and, and know what to look for definitely helps. Uh, this was my first video using my new software that allows me to screen record and allows me to show you all exactly what I'm looking for while I'm actually talking to my computer. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a lot more videos like this, looking at Google Earth, looking at satellite imaging, uh, and even, even bringing in my electronics and my apps and showing you all how I kind of pre-scout and, and look at the things on the water that I want to, to find before I'm ever even out there. So if there is any other type of video like this that you all want to see or any suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I'm going to be making a lot more videos like this in the near future and just continued on through my YouTube channel. Uh, and, and I'm excited to see you know the feedback and, and hear what y'all think about this. Uh, if there's any tips on how I can make them better, please let me know. But as always, thanks for checking out my video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Later.